Yo, what's going on Epic 7? I'm Sue and this is the final floor guide in my Abyss Beginner's Guide series for 2024. This is Abyss Floor 120. If you've made it this far, you should feel pretty proud of yourself. Abyss is some of the hardest content in all of Epic 7. And right now, only one floor stands between you and completing the entire thing. Floor 120 will have you facing off against none other than the man himself, Straze, the God Killer. His passive here, Encroaching Faustus, is the core mechanic of the fight. At the end of each of his turns, he will gain one level of encroachment. Each encroachment level increases his overall damage and reduces the damage that he takes. It is in your best interest to reduce his encroachment level whenever possible if you want to have any hope of killing him before he kills you. In order to reduce his encroachment level, you need to land two critical hits on him. If at any point his encroachment level ever reaches level 4, Straze will turn into Faustus and supercharge his ultimate for massive damage, so that's not a good idea. Straze will naturally turn into Faustus when he gets under 40% health, although it won't have the absurd increase that he gets from having encroachment at level 4. Next, let's talk about his ultimate here, Star Extinction. It is a really powerful ultimate. It is an AoE stun on your entire team that deals bonus damage equal to 80% of everyone's remaining health. This thing nearly automatically kills your entire team whenever it goes off, and because it has an AoE stun, you need to be prepared for it. The only way to reduce damage from Star Extinction is to have buffs on your characters. Each buff that they have reduces the damage by 15% up to a maximum of 60%. That said, it's going to be very difficult in order for you to actually keep buffs on your characters because almost all of Straze's moves remove buffs from your team, steal them for his team, or place buffs on himself, such as, say, an attack buff or a critical hit resistance buff. It is imperative that you bring a hero that can remove buffs consistently from Straze and Faustus so that, that way you can punch through for big damage, getting around things like immunity, or again, you can remove things like attack buff, so that, that way you don't die from an AoE attack. Lastly, we have to talk about this passive here, Approaching Terror, which inflicts Faustus's curse on characters on your team. It is by far the most annoying part about the fight. Whenever a character on your team uses a non-attack skill, right, you'll get Faustus's curse on that character. If that character ever uses a non-attack skill again, before they use an attack that lands on Straze, it will dispel all buffs from your entire team and stun everyone for one turn. If you forget about Faustus's curse and sequence incorrectly, it basically spells game over. You automatically die. It's really, really bad. What this means is that for heroes like Tamarin, once you go into idle mode, you must use her basic attack skill not her S2 for the CR push. If you don't do that, it's really easy to mess that up. You will wipe, so please keep that in mind. Now that you know what Straze is about, let's talk about the first floor here with Lilibet. She is accompanied by a bunch of these Golemads, right? These uh, Nitros, right? And this guy, uh, Kodstrom, whatever, of Disillusion. This guy, so she's accompanied by these. They do a lot of damage. They have very strong AoE attacks. They can defense break your entire team really, really bad. So we want to kill them as fast as possible. Additionally, Dilibet has this passive here, Mal of Destruction. It decreases the damage that she takes from allies that don't have buffs. And also every time you attack her with somebody that has no buffs, she gets a combat readiness push. Finally, you have to pay attention to her ultimate Soul Cutter. When she uses it, she gets a skill nullifier. And whoever she hits... After the initial damage of the attack is done, they will take damage equal to half of their current remaining health. However, if Soul Cutter brings you under 20%, you instantly die, right? And you're hit with Extinction, so there's no way for you to revive it if you bring a character like, say, Ruel of Light uh, or Maid Chloe. So that's pretty much Lilibet in a nutshell. Kill the adds, then rush down Lilibet and make sure whoever gets hit by the S3 is topped off, right? So whoever your main tank is, you need to keep them topped off at all times. But considering how short the cooldown is on the ultimate and how much combat radius Lilibet gets, uh, you might feel like you're fighting an uphill battle, like your tank is almost always going to die. So yeah, floor one, 
Got to make sure that we rush down Lilith as fast as possible. And then floor two, we need a good damage dealer, a good tank, a reliable way to remove buffs from Straze or Faustus, and make sure that whoever our healer is, if they've got non-attack skills that we don't sequence incorrectly, and we're weaving our non-attack skills in with our basic attack skills. Cool. Everyone on the same page here for what we're trying to do? Now, let's talk about team compositions. There are two ways that you can do this, both of which involve Raz and Tamarin as the core members. For your third and fourth members, you could choose Kitty Clarissa alongside of Taran or Guard. This is how I originally cleared Abyss 120 on my main account and is what I use for my original Abyss 120 guide from three years ago. I will link that down in this video's description if you want to see how an actual clear is done with that team. That said, that team requires Kitty Clarissa, which is an ML four star. I'm only trying to use whenever possible free to play characters. So either specialty changes, three stars, expert hunt characters, connections, adventurous path heroes. You already know the drill if you've made it this far. Now I could use Camilla, who is a connection hero that is very similar to Kitty Clarissa. They do almost the same exact things. But Camilla does not have a way to remove buffs from Straze or Faustus, which will make it significantly more difficult, a lot more RNG and inconsistent, which is not something I want to recommend for a guy. So instead, what we are going to do, if you don't have Kitty Clarissa, is we're going to use Brieg in place of Kitty Clarissa in order to actually fulfill the role of stripping. Because remember, his Limitless Sword Arts is a consistent way to remove boss from targets. And we're going to use Commander Lorena instead of Terran or Guard. You can still use Terran or Guard if you want, but because you no longer have three guaranteed dual attacks on your team, he becomes very inconsistent, and it's already pretty inconsistent to play him on floor one because you're going to be fighting green units with a blue DPS. So instead, I went with Commander Lorena because she is the strongest damage dealer that you can play in that slot. You could play other ML5s like maybe Spectre, Tenebria, or like Navy Captain Landy if you have them. But for most people, I think it's going to be Commander Lorena. So choose your shell, Kitty Clarissa plus Terran or Guard, or Brieg with Commander Lorena. Now let me show you the stats, and then we'll get into the actual fight itself. So here is Adventurer Raz. You ideally want his effectiveness at 85% plus and his speed as fast as possible, at least 230. The slower your Raz is, the more difficult this fight will be. Please try to go as fast as you possibly can on this character while clearing 85% effectus and over 20k HP. As for the artifact, Arius is what I'm going with, but you don't have to play this if you don't want to. It makes it harder for him to survive through star extinction. You can go with Sword of Azera if you so choose. Health percentage on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, boots are speed. Tamarin is going to be our healer of choice. And just like with Raz, at least 85% effectiveness, as you can see, I'm barely scraping by here at 83, right? 85% effectiveness is ideal. You will need backups in order to remove buffs from Straze and Faustus throughout the fight. Just like with Raz, health and defense are nice, but max speed is what is most important. If you get 240 plus on Tamarin, that would be ideal. Potion Vial is going to be amazing to deal with all the blinds and attack downs and defense breaks that are be coming out as well as the stuns from Star Extinction. As for the actual right side gear, health percentage on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, and boots are going to be speed. Next, we have Brieg here. Similar story. For Brieg, you want 35% effectiveness because Limitless Sword Arts automatically has 50% built into it. So as long as you have 35% on him, it is going to be fine. If you decide to play Kitty Clarissa, it needs to be 85%. After that, as fast as possible that you could get Brig while still having over 20k HP. If you could pick up any crit chance, that would be good because it would help with the encroachment level throughout the fight. For Brig, I would use Adamant Shield to help uh, Raz tank things to reduce the overall damage that he's going to be taking throughout the fight. Your mileage may vary if you want to play other stuff like, say, Elbrus Ritual Sword. Whatever you want to play, I think is going to be absolutely fine. If you're on Kitty Clarissa, you should be even faster then I have Brig here at like 240 or even 250 and beyond if you can get it. And her artifact will be Warhorn in case you were wondering. As for the right side gear, health percentage here on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, and boots are going to be speed. 
Finally, we have Commander Lorena, who is significantly easier, I feel like, to build than Terran or Guard if you decide to play her. So, no matter which one you play, level 60, 6-star Woken, max skills, max skill tree, if at all possible. Artifact, anything that gives a damage increase that is not Daydream Joker. So, in this case, a symbol of unity is really good because it just gives increase to damage. It also gives an increase to hit chance, making it the best option if you decide to play Terran or Guard to help deal with the green units that are on the very first floor. For Lorena, it's pretty simple. Just critical hit damage on the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, and attack percentage on the boots. If you decide to play Terran or Guard, hearing the character is significantly more difficult because not only do you need critical hit damage, attack, and attack as your right side pieces, but you also need 85% effectiveness, which means that you will need to use things like hit set, and you cannot use an effectiveness ring. You will not do enough damage to clear. So if you decide to go with Terran or Guard, you need 85% effectiveness in addition to building him as a full glass cannon DPS. So do keep that in mind. Now that you know the mechanics, and I've thoroughly explained both ways to gear the teams, let's jump into it so you can see how a run pans out. So at the start here, we want to S3 with Raz. We need to make sure that we get our souls as fast as possible because we need to be able to rush through stuff. So here is an ultimate coming out here. And as you can see, that's 50% of the damage that we just took. Brie took an absolute ton there. So we want to use Tamarin here to skill 2 and heal up. Barrier up here with Brie. And now we want to defense break the yellow golem as he's the most powerful. Right, we got our defense break. Now we want to skill three it with Lorena. Go one here with Raz to hopefully fish for a dual attack. We got one there. Same thing here with Brig. Basic attack here. And now if you didn't get a lucky dual attack, you want to soul burn and kill the yellow one. If it's already dead, then pick one of the two blue golems and focus on that. Brig should attack a blue golem if possible. Limitless sword arts will go into uh, Lilibet here. Hopefully you get a defense break at a slow. All right, we want to skill two here with Tamarin. And then just focus down this blue golem. Barrier up with Bree. Hit the blue golem. Soul burn, and hopefully this kills off the blue golem. All right, skill one here. Skill three here for the souls. now Roz is going to be in critical condition. Alright, so let's go try to defense break this golem here with Brig. And that lets Roz go for S3 for the defense buff and the healing. And then we can idle mode here to try to top everybody off. Okay, we could attack here with Bree. This will go into Lilibet here. Alright, and then we could kill this golem off. And then we're going to just walk down Lilibet. Alright, so we're going to go S2 here. We don't want to mess up Bree's rhythm. Basic attack here. S1 here. Kill 2 here with Tamarin. S1 here. S1. And then this will be Limitless Sword Arts. S1 here. Kill 1 here. Go one. Go one. 
And then Lorena picks it up with skill one. So now you'll go into your second floor here against Straze. You want to make sure that you start this fight with a skill one on Tamarind. You do not want to blow idle mode at the start because these golems will AoE defense break you. They don't do a lot of damage, but if you use idle mode at the start to cleanse the blinds and the attack downs, then you will be very swiftly met with defense breaks on your whole team. So don't do that. Instead, S1 a golem. If you S1 Straze, he will get a CR push. We only want to hit him at all possible with things that actually deal real damage. Are you finished fighting? All right, so we will go S2 here on Bree. And as you can see, he now has Faustus's curse, so I cannot use another non-attack skill until I attack Straze. So I will attack here, and then this will go into him here. And, the arrogance of a fool. and now he is defense broken and attacked down. We will soul burn here. Try to get some damage in. We get skill three for the souls. And now he's at level one because we've gotten two crits on him. Luckily, you know, immunity to dodge that defense break there. He is back up to encroachment two. We're going to skill three here with Brig and Destrazi to remove this immunity so we can keep our damage going. All right, now we want to idle mode and this will get rid of all the debuffs, but notice again, here comes Faustus's curse. You cannot press S2. So instead we will S1 here. We can go soul burn here with Lorena. Lorena again. We can go here and hit here. I don't want to push him up. Go attack here. All right, so now he has that immunity again. So what we're going to do is we're going to S2 here. And that's going to heal everybody up. All right, no reason to soul burn here, right? Because he's got this. So I'm going to go here and get my defense ball. All right, I'm going to just S1 here. We're going to barrier up. We're going to S1 an add here. And then we're going to let Limitless Sword Arts here remove the immunity again. And remember, we have this, so now, even though if we had S2 so for some reason, we can't do that, so we're going to S1 here. Alright, this is a bit of a greedy play, but I have so many souls right now, I'm going to soul burn here with Commander Lorena for huge damage. And then this might actually put him into Faustus range, and that, therefore we completely bypass Star Extinction. And now he will turn into Faustus. No real damage, right? Because, you know, again, we got rid of that. But we are stunned still. So what we want to do here is I'm going to actually try to S1 incomplete Faustus to remove this. But by doing so, it will give him an attack buff. Still, at least having critical hit resistance gone massively increases my overall damage. Didn't get it, sadly. Alright, let's go skill one here. Try to hit here. Alright. Trying to think of how we want to do this. Let's just skill one here. I need to find a way to consistently get rid of that. Alright, so here we go. We go S3 here with Brig. Hopefully this removes everything and slows him. That would be super beneficial to us. Got it. I cannot S2 here. If I do that, I lose access to idle mode. So instead, we have to soul burn here. And we're going to hit here and not push up Faustus. If I must fight. So we can try to force Faustus here, but he has end of all life coming up. So that's pretty bad for us. Hmm, Lorena might be in trouble. 
So instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and punch it. Kill three. Hopefully, we got a pushback. Hopefully, Lorena doesn't die here. Very close to dead. Alright. Barrier up. Attack not Faustus. Alright, so what we want to do here... Razor thin margin here, right? So, best play we can make here, because we don't want to push Faustus up too much. We will push it up, so... But if, we, if we do the S3, we're not going to get a defense buff. So let's go S1 and add. Idle mode. Soul burn here. Back here. And then this will go here and defense break in slow Faustus. Sadly, he cleanses. He has immunity again. I'm going to go skill three here. Just for the defense buff and the healing. We can skill three here. We need to save our souls for Tamarin. Need to cycle her back around for Bree to make a window. We could hit here. Hmm... Tough call here. So we're 10% here, right? So now we could get lucky and try to just brute force it. Because if we go Soul Burn, S1, Tamarin, and both hit and not get hit with crit hit resistance, we win. So that's the gamble I'm going to take here for the video. Your mileage may vary. The safe route is to try to wait this out. But to be fair, he is going to hit you with this S2 in a second. So I'm going to go for my out. I'm playing to win here. Going for my out. Okay, then strip the buffs here, and then we go Spiral Breakthrough, and that should be a win for us. And there you go, Abyss Floor 120 in a nutshell. In fact, all of Abyss in a nutshell. Hopefully, this guide series was of some help to you. If you have any questions on Abyss Floor 120 or just any of the Abyss Floors in general, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, share your clears with your fellow players. Let them know what other alternative strategies you use down in the comment section below. This is not the end, though, of the Beginner's Abyss series. There is still the Challenge Abyss series, which I will be doing in uh, just a couple of days to weeks after this video series wrap. So if you would like to kind of follow along with that portion, the second tail end of Abyss, the Challenge mode, which despite its name is actually somewhat easier, than the floors that we've done so far. Make sure you get subscribed to the channel, like the video, ring the notification bells, all that stuff, right? Again, there's still another 20 or so of these things to come, and I'll put them in a separate playlist just like with this one. Hopefully, you will join me for those Challenge Abyss videos. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one. Congratulations on finishing Abyss. Later now.